my math 30s, we are moving on to the study of trigonometry in 30-1. And this video is going to be the first lesson. I will do this first lesson in two parts, and it corresponds to page 495 of your textbook. This first lesson is going to be largely an overview of um, concepts that you learned in 20-1, and then I'll introduce a few uh, new concepts in this. It's going to be a lot of terminology. So I often tell students at the end of this lesson, uh, once you've done the questions and you're comfortable with things, you need to create a study sheet with a lot of these terms because students tend to get uh, the terms mixed up from this lesson. So just to sort of start with, um, in this unit, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at angles in what's called standard position, and we're going to measure these angles, or we're going to express these angles in one of two ways. You're most familiar with degrees, and that's what we did in 10C in 20-1, and in 30-1, we're going to continue with degrees, but we're mostly going to be dealing with something called radians. And I always sort of say to students, you know that you're really good in trig when you actually stop thinking in degrees and you're going to start thinking in radians. But for now, radians will be in a different lesson and we're just going to focus on degrees. Um, to do a review, let's draw a Cartesian plane on the left side of your um, notes and we're going to label uh, the quadrants and the degrees. So what we have is we have uh, our Cartesian plane is divided into four quadrants and we always start in the top right quadrant and then we label going counterclockwise. So quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. In 10C and 20-1, we stayed with um, angles that were between 0 and 360 degrees. So in 20-1 and 10C, we would have said, okay, we start at 0 degrees, and then this would be a 90-degree angle. A straight line makes a 180-degree angle. Um, going three-quarters of the way around would be 270 degrees, and one complete rotation is 360 degrees. What happens in math 30-1 is if I take this arm here, I could rotate it once for 360 degrees, but then I could actually keep spinning it. And if I go twice around, that would be 720 degrees. I could also go in the negative direction. So zero degrees, this would be negative 90 degrees, and this would be 180 degrees, negative 180. Okay, so in 30-1, we are not limited to dealing with between 0 and 360, and we could extend outside of those parameters. So angles can be measured in degrees, and 360 degrees is one complete rotation. So if I said do two rotations, 2 times 360 degrees, two rotations would be a total of 720 degrees. What we have is we have an initial arm, and that arm is going to open up, and where it terminates, we call that the terminal arm. So let's say my initial arm, I start rotating it, and I terminate it in quadrant two. So I'm going to terminate my arm there. And let's say I say that this is 135 degrees. So a few things. The 135 degree angle comes from right here. So I would say theta is equal to 135 degrees. What we call this is we call this an angle in standard position. So right now this angle that I have illustrated is the angle in standard position. From 20-1, once you had your angle in standard position, what you always want to calculate was your reference angle. So how you calculate your reference angle is you find a point, and it doesn't matter where, and you put it on your terminal arm, and you always draw a vertical line to your x-axis. You will get a triangle here, and it's always going to be an acute triangle, and your reference angle is going to be this angle here. That would be theta r. And in order to calculate theta r, you would take 180 degrees, because if I went to the straight line, it would be 180 degrees, and you would subtract the angle in standard position, which is 135 degrees. And that result would give you your reference angle. So 180 degrees minus 135 degrees is a 45 degree angle. So my reference angle is 45 degrees. Okay, so that's the reference angle. 135 would be the angle in standard position. 
we could have positive angles. So when you rotate your arm in a counterclockwise rotation, this would represent a positive angle, and that would be 235 degrees. To get the reference angle, again, you'd put a dot on your terminal arm, you'd go a vertical line to your x-axis, and you'd be calculating this angle in here using 235 degrees and 180 degrees. So theta r in this case would be 235 degrees minus 180 degrees. Theta r, that would give you your reference angle. And if you um, had, what do we have, 235 minus 180 would give us a 55 degree reference angle. To double check, what you could do is you could say 180 plus 55 and you would get 235. So this is what we call a positive angle, a negative angle of 247 degrees. So this from here to here gives us negative 90, negative 180. Uh, this would be negative 270. So negative 247 is not going, uh, would be terminating here. And that angle there would be negative 247 degrees. Okay, class example number one. Sketch the rotation angle in standard position um, and state the quadrant in which the angle terminates. So 290 degrees, you won't ever be given the degrees, and you'll just have to know that 290 degrees is going to terminate in quadrant four. So how we would illustrate that. There's my initial arm. It's going to terminate in quadrant four. And that would be 290 degrees. That is my angle in standard position, would be 290 degrees, and it terminates in quadrant four. Okay, negative 135 degrees. What I often do is I often like thinking of the positive angle to find out where that is. So in order to find out um, what the positive angle is, I'm gonna add 360 degrees, and I'll show you what happens. If on my calculator, I take negative 135 and I add 360, 225 degrees. So I'm going to find where the arm would terminate for 225 degrees. I know that 225 degrees is between 180 and 270. So my arm is going to terminate in this quadrant here. And I'm just going to write down that 225 degrees. So if I went this way, the positive, that would be 225 degrees. But they want me to actually start from zero and go in this direction. That angle there, that blue angle, would be negative 135 degrees. Right? Because here would be negative 90, here would be negative 180, and so negative 135 would be in quadrant three. Okay, 750 degrees. So one rotation is 360. Two rotations is 720. So one full rotation is 360. Two full rotations is 720. Uh, the difference between 720 and 750 is 30 more degrees I have to go, which would be about here. And that would be 750 degrees be that guy there. And that terminates in quadrant one. Class example two. The point A lies on the terminal arm of a rotation angle theta. In each case, draw the angle theta in standard position. Okay, so they want me to put point A on my graph and they say A is at negative three comma four. So that's my x value, that's my y value. So we're going to label our Cartesian plane, because you'll never get one that's labeled. And we'll say x is negative 3, y is, uh, is 4. So at negative 3 and 4, draw that point. And that point always lies on the terminal arm. So what I'm going to do is from the origin, 
always draw a line going out from the origin. So that point there is A, and I'm going to label it. It's negative 3, comma 4. The angle in standard position, because it says uh, draw the angle in standard position, it's always from the initial arm to where it terminates. That would be theta, which is the angle in standard position. And then in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to calculate theta. Okay, let's uh, put point P on. So point P is x is negative 7 and y is negative 2. So let's label our axes and x is negative 7 and y is negative 2, so we're in quadrant 3. My point P would be down there. I always draw my terminal arm coming out of from the origin. So your point is always going to lie on the terminal arm. So that point there is point P, which is at negative 7, comma negative 2. And that would be how you do class example number 2. Okay. Class example number three is going to have to do with something called coterminal angles. So highlight coterminal angles. This, um, some of your 20-1 teachers may have um, introduced this concept. Probably most have not, though. So this is going to be new for you. So coterminal angles, what they are, they're angles in standard position. with the same terminal arm. Okay, so they're angles drawn in standard position that terminate at the exact same place on your Cartesian plane. So what's going to happen is these three examples here, 150, negative 210, and 510, these three are going to be coterminal angles. So I'll show you what I mean. If I said draw an angle in standard position of 150 degrees, you would say, okay, 150 degrees is in the second quadrant. which would be right about here. And this angle would be 150 degrees. So theta, my angle in standard position is 150 degrees. And my reference angle, so for my triangle, my reference angle would be 30 degrees. Okay. If I said, well, where would negative 210 degrees be? If we do the little trick of adding 360 degrees, on my calculator, if I type in negative 210 plus 360, let's see where this terminates. It's 150 degrees. So negative 210 is going to terminate at, if it was as a positive angle, 150 degrees. But what I have to do, because it says negative 210, is I need to start at zero, and I need to rotate the angle in this direction. And that would be negative 210 degrees. And the reference angle, so your reference angle always has to be positive, okay? So the reference angle has to be positive. This would be negative 180 degrees. This would be negative 210 degrees. And the difference between 180 and 210 is 30 degrees. So we would still have that 30 degree reference angle. So even though this uh, rotational angle was negative, it terminates in the exact same spot that a rotation angle of 150 degrees terminated. 510 degrees. Okay, so if I said, well, where's 510 degrees? If I subtract 360, let's see what we get. So 510 minus 360 is 150. So what that means is this, 150. In order to get to a rotation angle of 550 degrees, they went once around the circle and then 150 degrees more, right? Because 360 degrees 
is once around the circle, an additional 150 degrees would give you a rotation angle of 510 degrees. So let's see where this would terminate. Once around the circle is 360, then I have to go 150 degrees, so I have to get to here, and this would be 510 degrees. Okay, these three terminate in the exact same spot. These three have the exact same reference angle of 30 degrees. Um, so it says these, uh, the three rotation angles have the same terminal arm. They terminate in the exact same position. Those three angles are called co-terminal angles. So 150 degrees, negative 210 degrees, and 510 degrees. Those are all co-terminal with one another. They terminate in the same spot. I want you to box in or star this. It's going to talk about principal angle, which you wouldn't have heard in Math 20-1. The principal angle between these three angles, so these three coterminal angles, if I said what's the principal angle, the principal angle of a set of coterminal angles, it's the smallest positive rotation angle with the same terminal arm. So the principal angle is always going to be between 0 and 360 degrees. So I could give you a set of angles that are coterminal, and I could say what is going to be the principal angle. It's going to be the positive angle that is between 0 and 360 degrees. So between these three, it's the smallest positive, which would be this guy here, 150 degrees. So between those three coterminal angles, the principal angle is 150 degrees. Okay, class example three. So what class example three says, and then I'm going to give you um, some practice that you're going to do. Class example three says, determine the angles in this domain. So what they're saying is they want our rotation to be um, between 360 degrees and negative 360. So what that means is they're restricting the domain. I can only go one rotation in the positive to get 360 degrees or one rotation in the negative to get negative 360 degrees. So I have to stay within this restricted domain here. Okay, so 285 degrees Sorry, so what we're finding again is coterminal within this domain. So 285 degrees, that would be, um, we know that this is 270 degrees. So 285 degrees would be in here, right? That would be 285 degrees. What we want to find is I'm not going to add 360 to this because I would be outside of my domain, but what I could do is I could subtract 360 degrees from 285 degrees. If you subtract 360 degrees, you are going to get negative 75 degrees. So if I was to draw a second Cartesian plane, negative 75 degrees would be right here. This is how I'd represent negative 75 degrees. And these two are coterminal with each other. How you could check this is if I said, okay, what's the reference angle? This reference angle here would be 360 degrees minus 270 degrees. Right? So if I check that on my calculator, 360 degrees minus 270 gives me a reference angle, sorry, 360 minus 285 was the number they gave us, a reference angle of 75 degrees. So this angle, reference angle is 75 degrees. So theta r is equal to 75 degrees. And if we look here, that would be negative 75 degrees. So what the question is asking is what is 285 coterminal with? The answer is it's coterminal with negative 75 degrees. Okay, negative 13 degrees. What is that coterminal with? So negative 13 degrees, uh, 13 degrees would be right here. And if I said, well, what's the positive coterminal angle? You would take that number and you would add it to 360. 
Adding that to 360 would give you 347 degrees. And 347 degrees would be at the exact same coterminal angle as negative 13. So 347 degrees. And again, double check that. If you checked your reference angle, your reference angle would be 360 degrees minus 347 degrees, so your reference angle would be 13 degrees. So negative 13 and 347 are coterminal with one another. Okay, 395 degrees is actually outside of this domain, right, from positive 360 to negative 360. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 360 degrees, and that 395 would be coterminal with 35 degrees. So 35 degrees would be here. Okay, so that would be 35 degrees. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, what else would be coterminal with 35 degrees if I go in this direction, so the negative direction? Where else would I land at 30 with the same coterminal arm? If you take 35 degrees and you subtract 360 degrees, 35 minus 360 is negative 325. So if I was at this 35 degrees, right, and I subtracted 360 degrees, so I did one complete rotation, that new arm here would be at negative 325 degrees. So what is coterminal with 395 that's within this restricted domain? 35 degrees is one of the answers that's coterminal as is negative 325 degrees. So those two answers are within my domain. They're within my domain and they are coterminal with 395 degrees. Okay, the second part of this question was write an expression involving the principal angle that re represents all angles in the domain that are coterminal with a given angle. So here's how we would do this. If I take 285 degrees, so I'm just gonna do A down here. So if I take 285 degrees, so I take the angle that they give me, I could keep adding or subtracting 360 degrees. So because I could add or subtract 360 degrees, I just would say plus 360 degrees, and then I'm gonna put N there. And I'm going to say n belongs to the set of integers because what I could do is two 285 degrees, so by 285 degree angle, which was right here, I could keep adding 360 degrees to it to be coterminal, or I could keep subtracting 360 degrees to be coterminal. So how we say that is just whatever the angle was plus 360 degrees times n because n could be 1, 2, 3 times around the circle, or it could be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. To do the next one, to do this guy, we're always going to take the principal angle, right? So we're going to take the smallest positive angle, which was 347 degrees. So for b, we would take the 347 degrees, and to that, I could keep adding 360 degrees or I could keep subtracting 360 degrees. So I just put plus 360 degrees because n could be negative 1, right, once around in the other direction. And then I say n belongs to the set of integers. Okay, for c, again, we take the smallest positive coterminal angle. So between 395, 35, and negative 325, the smallest positive coterminal would be 35 degrees, so that's our principal angle. So C would be 35 degrees plus 360 N, and N belongs to the set of integers. So that takes care of part one. And part two will be the remaining class examples.